Hello and welcome to the Critic Cluedus. Today we are in Mountain Blade 2 Bannerlords. This video is yet another tips video. This tips video isn't solely for beginners. This is getting a little bit deeper into the game now and a few extra things to kind of think about as we're going through this video. So some of these things you may already know may not be useful to you yet or you may have already moved past. But hopefully one or two of these things are going to be helpful to you. If so, let me know down in the comments what your favorite tip is. And again, if I don't include something that you think is really helpful to know for everyone else, then drop that down in the comments below. But anyway, let's move on to tip number one. And that is don't be afraid to go to war. Now, I've mentioned this in a couple of different videos, but going to war doesn't have to be as scary as you think it is. Yes, you're going to be outnumbered, especially at the beginning of the game, if you don't even have a kingdom and you are looking to pick on a kingdom yourself. Do it. Absolutely go ahead and do it. At the end of the day, most armies or most troops that are riding around have unupgraded troops. Therefore, if you are running, say, 50, 60 upgraded troops, decent quality troops, then there's a good chance, a high chance, that you can take on an army much bigger than yourselves. And you can earn some serious loot from it as well. Not only can you earn that loot, you can earn that renown. Anyone on a renown grind to get your own kingdom is so important. So go to war, have some fights, earn some renown and some influence. Tip number two is for how to bring up the combat log. All you have to do is hold select or back, depending on which platform you are on. If you keep holding it, obviously the encyclopedia pops up at first. Take that away and hey, presto, you are left with a combat log. You can cycle through that to see if there's anything that you missed. Unfortunately, sometimes you can miss some important things in this game. Well, this way you don't have to. Tip number three is don't neglect steward. Stewardship is such an important um, skill tree to cycle through. And stewardship as well as leadership actually boosts your party size. So if you're jealous of everyone running around with a huge party size, well, it's probably because they've got high stewardship as well as a high leadership. Um, and seriously, it can help out. And to boost your stewardship just make yourself the quartermaster of your own clan tip number four is sieging a castle and in within sieging a castle you can actually make a few different siege weapons now it doesn't necessarily go into great depths of explaining what these siege weapons do so i'm gonna have a little chat with you about the different siege weapons that we actually have now first of all we have the ballista now these are the fastest to actually make and they will shoot down the castles catapults and whatever they happen to have there building multiple of these um, to take out those catapults is a really good idea then we have the catapult and the trebuchet they will knock down the walls you also then have the siege towers the siege towers means you don't have to mess around with those clunky ladders um, which can be a real pain in the butt. And then, of course, you have the battering ram, which knocks down the door. Tip number five is about your troops and upgrading. My advice to you is to batch upgrade. Don't upgrade as they are ready to level up, because any time you actually upgrade a troop so let's say for instance you have three out of 30 to upgrade that will reset the experience the rest of that troop unit have actually had meaning they get reset back to zero so you're further away from upgrading the rest do yourself a favor hold five wait till you have the entire group to upgrade or you know until you really need those upgrades because upgrading them all together is the quickest way to actually upgrade your entire troops tip number six is all about those lords now if you go to war and you have all these battles, more often than not, at the end of the battle, you have got a chance to take the lords, the enemy lords, uh, as your prisoner. Um, this can be really good because you can then ransom them for 
a decent amount of cash. It's not game changing. And if you followed my smithing guide or my trading guide, then you probably have a ton of money on you already. The money you actually get from these ransoms really isn't worth it. If you want to execute every single person or every single lord in um, the continent, then it's probably, you know, the only way you're going to go about doing it. But I would recommend letting them go. And the reason I would recommend letting them go is you're going to get into a lot of battles in um, in this game. And the more you let go, the higher relationship you have with these lords, meaning you'll be able to actually recruit their clan into your kingdom. Tip number seven once you're actually part of a kingdom or you have your own kingdom, create an army. Now, even if you're not at war, creating an army has bonuses and benefits. Just being in an army or leading an army will actually boost your leadership. And again, if you are also your quartermaster, then you're boosting your stewardship as well, meaning you're able to boost your stats passively. The more you boost them, the more you're going to level up. It's a serious decent um, way to boost your stats for not actually doing anything at all plus if you actually have your own clan members in your army then they don't cost any influence yes the cohesion will you know corrode over time but you can boost that up for very very little influence um, so yeah have a go try it out and you'll soon realize that your leadership points are skyrocketing Tip number eight is kind of a beginner tip when you very first start the game. If you go down to Poros, you can actually buy all of the hogs in town or at least a thousand dinars worth because that's all you start this game with. But if you actually go down into your infantry, you can slaughter all of these hogs and sell the meat and the hide separately and very quickly double your money. There will also be more hogs to spare and um, back in the shop so you can rinse and repeat this and it's a great early game um tip in order to get some decent money if you don't want to go down the trading route and if you don't want to go down the smithing route this is a really good way to earn a few extra bucks tip number nine will also be a really good one to remember at the beginning of the game when attacking looters um when attacking anybody and you gather all those prisoners as well as donating them you know for influence later in the game at the beginning of the game you can just sell them in the tavern so them in a tavern is a great way to get that extra few dinars in your pocket early game extra money equals an easier life and there you go guys there are nine quick tips for both beginners and for later game Hopefully some of these have been useful for you. If they have, let me know down in the comments what your favorite tip was. If you've got a tip that I haven't shared yet, let us know as well. Don't forget we also have that active Discord. The link for that will be down in the description. It'd be great to have some more of you guys and playing Banner Lords in the Discord. And again, if you've enjoyed this video or just found it entertaining, don't forget to hit that like button and subscribe to the channel that we don't miss out on more videos just like this. But until next time, I've been a monk, you've been a critic clueless, and I will see you in the next video real soon. Until then, take it easy and happy gaming.